Welcome everybody to another video from Robotic Motor Services. I'm going to try to quickly go over uh, these multimeters here. Uh, these are the cheap ones from Harbor Freight. You see me use them in a lot of videos because we try to replicate the way you would be doing stuff at home to make it easier for everybody to follow along. And we know that if this is the only time you're going to be using a multimeter, uh, you're probably going to go out there and buy, you know, this six or seven dollar multimeter rather than buying one that's a hundred bucks or more, more accurate, more uh, sophisticated, and all that stuff. So. As we get into more stuff with um, checking resistance and continuity, I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page here, what to look for, how to set these up, and how to get the best out of them. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have it set to the right uh, specification. And we're going to be looking at our ohm scale, which is the one that looks like a horseshoe. And when you come down here to 200 ohms, we want to set it to 200, not 2000, not 200K, just 200. And that means that once this reads resistance up to 200 ohms, it will give you this, meaning not one ohm, but infinite, meaning there is nothing between it. It just goes on for infinity without one end touching the other. We get a lot of people that are confused, thinking that they measured the resistance in their boundary wire and they only have one ohm resistance. No, this actually means there's a break, a cut, a gap, something. Something's not connected. Um, Everything you're going to want to find and hope for should be on this side over here. The lower the number, the better. Uh, as the number increases, that means you have more resistance. That means you're going to get into stuff like corrosion, rust, partial breaks, and all that good stuff. So now that you know where to set this at, 200 ohms, first thing you want to do is you want to see what your meter thinks is a good solid connection. And the way to do that is you're going to take your two probes and you're going to touch them together and make a good solid connection. This should be one ohm of resistance or less. And there we are, 0.8 ohms. This meter is working exactly the way it should. We are good to go. Uh, some, it'll show you just zeros across there. It'll show you like 0.02. That's even better. But we're, we're one ohm or less. That's the, the good baseline that you want to look for with your, your meter. Now other ones don't work quite as well or consistently and that would be this one right here. If we touch these two probes together this is going to say 5.5 ohms, 5.4 ohms. Well at least now you know uh, that's what I get for a baseline reading when I've got a good solid connection. So when you go to measure the resistance in a wire, a short piece of wire like this to make sure it's good, you know that that's what's saying that's what it's saying is a good solid connection. That's where you want to be. And the shorter the wire, the easier it is for, for that when you have a meter that's off by this. And you can see touching both ends of the this piece of wire, we get exactly the same number as we would get if we just touched our our two contacts on our probes together. So that's perfect. That's a good way to tell, even with this meter not reading accurately, that, okay, my stuff is good. I know that that was my baseline number, and when I measure this wire, that's what I get. Perfect. So on the stuff we'll work on for one ohm or less, that's what you want to look for right there. You want to see what your baseline is when you touch your probes together, and when we're saying one ohm or less, when you put this to either end of the wire, you should have whatever it shows on your meter, whatever it shows when you go like this, that's what it should show when you test either end from either end of that wire. Follow me there. Uh, now, when we get into larger runs of wire, like boundary wire systems, there's going to be more resistance because it's just a longer stretch of wire. So it's going to take longer for everything to get through it. So that's where you're going to see us calling for uh, specifications like 14 ohms or 12 ohms or 20 ohms or less then this will happen or uh you know 10 ohms or something like that uh there's going to be just more resistance because it's more wire as i was saying so that gets a little bit trickier when your meter isn't working as accurately as one that that is um i do have a 500 meter spool wire here and I'm going to show you what happens when you test the resistance in one of them because, again, it's a lot of wire. So we're not going to end up with one ohm of resistance here through that size of a coil of wire. So what we'll do is we will take this meter here, 
we'll touch our probes together because even if you have a good expensive one, that's what you should do. You should always just double check it before you go to measure anything. And again, we're consistent. We've got our 0.8, so I'll touch one probe to one end of this spool wire and put the other probe on the other end of the spool wire uh, right there. And we are going to get, oh, get on here better. We are going to get eight ohms of resistance through this spool wire. That's good. That's we know that if we touch this together, we've got 0.8. So we're going through 500 meters of wire. That's pretty good. We only have eight ohms of resistance through 500 meters. I mean that's that's close to 1600 feet of wire. Um, yeah, that's a that's a pretty good number. Now, with this other meter, remember we were already at like what five over five ohms just when we were touching the the two probes together. So here's where we got to do a little bit more math. We're getting 5.4 ohms when we just touch these two probes together. But we know we should have about 1 ohm when we touch these together. So if we take 1 ohm away from what it's showing right here, we got 5.3, take the 1 ohm away, we're at 4.3. So keep that in your mind, 4.3. It's something you want to write down when you go to doing this stuff. You want to write down what that that number is that's showing on your your display screen, just so you don't forget it later on. Write it down. It makes it easier to do the math as well. We're 5.3. We want to take away one ohm because one ohm would be good. So 4.3, and then we'll measure this right here, and we've got 12.3 ohms through this 500 meter spool wire. If we take away that 4.3 ohms that we're off by, we've got 8 ohms. 8 ohms is exactly what we had through the good meter when we were measuring the resistance in this spool wire. So, All right, one more time here so I can do the math for you as we go uh, with a meter that is just not very accurate. Again, you want to get your baseline and touch these two probes together. What do we got? We have 4.2. So we're going to write down the 4.2. We're looking for 1, 1 ohm at the most. So we'll subtract our 1 ohm from the 4.2, and we get 3.2 ohms. We know that our reading is off by 3.2 ohms. So now we take our probes, we touch 1 to each end of this 500 meter spool of boundary wire, and we get 11.2. So 11.2 ohms minus the 3.2 that we are off by, and guess what we have? We have 8 ohms. That's it. So that's why you write these numbers down, and that way you have it there. You don't forget, and you can see by even having one that when you touch the two probes together, it might not show 1 ohm or less. You know how to compensate for it. You can just do the math then to figure out how off, how far you're off by, and you're good to go. So that's what you're going to want to do when we tell you, hey, uh, your boundary wire system, you know, if it's over 20 ohms, then this, or if it's 14 ohms or less, or something like that. You know how now to go out there, even if this thing, when you would touch this together, if this is saying like, like 7 ohms or 8 ohms when you touch these together, it's off, but you can do the math to figure out how far it's off by, test your your uh, your wire and then subtract how far you're off by it and see if you're within the specifications so hopefully this helps you guys out and uh, gets you in the ballpark and um, now you understand a little bit more how simple it is to test resistance and continuity and to get a better accurate number out of one of these cheap multimeters. meters that's going to do it for this video here as always if you have any questions or if you need help with anything, you're looking for automotive parts or any of that stuff or technical support, check out our website, www.roboticmowerservices.com. If you can't find what you're looking for on there, you can contact us through the website, or you can send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to this channel.